guys, how's it going? It is a beautiful morning out here today. It's 68 degrees, sun is shining, light breeze, and we are gonna harvest some produce. I've got buckets and crates. I have absolutely no idea if we'll be able to fill these today. We're gonna start out here in the cut flower garden, and you can see things are just looking really pretty. There are tons of flowers out here right now, tons of dahlias, tons of zinnias, snapdragons, sunflowers, amaranth. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff coming in right here, mostly fall crops. Cosmos are looking amazing, but no color yet. A uh, bunch of seedlings over here, pumpkin patch there. Anyway, it's a really fun space right now. I'm actually holding off from cutting any flowers for just the next few days because one of our friends is getting married at the beginning of this next week. And I told her she could come cut whatever she wants from this space, however much of it she wants. And so I want there to be a lot available. Of course, there's a color theme to the wedding. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what they're going to end up taking. I am making her bouquet, um, her bride, bride's bouquet. So I will film this, you guys. I will try to capture as much of it as I can. It's really fun that a lot of our flowers are gonna get to go to that this year. We have not done our free flower day yet. I do hope to do that at some point this year. That was so fun last year to do. Uh, but I have given away a lot of bouquets. It's just kind of here and there, not all at once. And even if every single flower gets picked next week for the wedding, they are quickly replaced by more. It is amazing how productive these flowers are. So we're gonna be leaving all the flowers alone. We're just gonna be focusing on food production today. So we'll start out here in this space and then we'll move up toward our raised bed area. We really should give you guys a tour of this. We, we tried the other day. We came out and started to film and there was a bunch of machinery working on stuff. It just ended up not working out. So it's just such a fun area. Really wanna show you guys everything and the grass is coming in beautifully. It's just, it's looking like a different spot. And by the end of this month, the high tunnels will be gone and we'll have all of this area cleared out for either some kind of fun project or we may just plant it like the rest of this area. So this is where we're gonna start. We've got Hale's Best Cantaloupe right down here on the ground. I can actually smell some of them. I think that a few of them are cracked open. I just didn't get to them in time. We have been harvesting. I've harvested, I don't know, maybe, eight, nine melons from just these two plants already. They're right next to the dahlias. There's a row of gladiolus. We just seeded Swiss chard. You can see them all coming up. We've got sunspot sunflowers lining this area. Isn't this so pretty? Oh, I just love it. Anyway, there's just two cantaloupe plants that I had left over. So I tucked them into this area and they've gotten huge. They're an 80 day maturity melon. This one is overripe here. See how it slipped from the vine right there? Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty soft. We'll probably give the chickens that one. Look at this one right here. So let's see if it's ready. For cantaloupe, not honeydew, but cantaloupe, you can see when the stem wants to easily come off, which this one is not really coming off very easy. It's got a lot of moisture though around it. And it's starting to crack, so I'm going to pull it. Let me find another example here. This one right here, see the stem? See how it slips right off the plant? That's when you know that it's really ready and ripe. Unless you're checking your melons every single day, you might prefer picking them before they even slip the vine. Uh, you can kind of tell, you can smell them. You know, you can smell the, uh, the cantaloupe. If you can smell that ripe kind of smell, then they may be ready. Um, I don't check mine every single day, so I find if I even miss it by a day and um, it slips the vine, but maybe it would have slipped the vine the day before, it can be a little bit overripe for me and I don't like, I don't like that texture. So anyway, uh, let's just get these all picked. We got 16 good Hale's Best cantaloupe, varying in size. It looks like out of the 16, two, four, six, eight of them 
are really big and eight of them are kind of medium size. Now we're in the area where I've got the other melon plants. We've got watermelon and cantaloupe. In this back row here, we have sugar baby watermelon, Dixie Queen and Crimson Sweet. And then in the row right next to it, which you really can't distinguish from one row from the next at the moment, but you can see there's a water tube, the half inch tube right there. That's the back row that has the cantaloupe, which this water has been shut off now for three weeks, I think. Let me check. It's been 19 days since I shut the water off, so almost three weeks. The reason why we do that is watermelon is a desert plant. If you keep on giving your watermelon water after they've set their fruit and they're starting to grow and mature, that plant will still keep feeding those fruit water, which makes your watermelon taste very watery and not very intense. And that's not what we want. We don't want to spend the whole season tending these plants and then not have very tasty uh, watermelon. So I actually picked one of the, I think it was a Crimson Sweet the other night, 32 and a half pounds is what it weighed in at. And um, it had been, so let's see, it had been over two weeks since the water had been shut off and that melon was so good. It was so tasty. Um, the vines still look fine. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I wouldn't look this good after 19 days without any water. <laughs> look at that. Like there's no sign of wilt, nothing. What I did, which I showed you in earlier videos, is that this whole thing is watered with a grid system of half inch black poly tubing with emitters um, wherever I planted the vines. Uh, but I put in a valve between the last couple of rows and so I have it off. This is what it looks like when it's on. That's off. And I have one on each side so that it cuts all the water to the back row off, which is where I have my watermelon. So a few details about these Crimson Sweets. They get pretty good size. Uh, like I said, the other night I had one 32 and a half pounds. At, I think average is around 20 or 25 pounds. So we're doing good this year. I've heard that, you know, you wait until you've got two finger width between the uh, color stripes to know when it's right. But I don't think that's correct because every variety looks different. Like look at the Dixie Queens. They have a way different marking pattern than Crimson Sweet, as do the Sugar Babies over here. The other thing you can look for is there's a little tendril right at the stem where the melon attaches to the stem. Do you see this right here? When that's all brown and dried up like that, then you kind of know it's ripe. Give it a good thump. You can feel the end of it, a tiny bit of give, barely any, but I think that this one's gonna be perfect take a look at this one right here. You can see the tendril on this one is just now starting to brown on the tip. So I might wait a day or two to pick this one. This is a huge one. Look at this. Holy moly. There's the tendril all brown and dry. Sounds good. Also, you can look at the colored spot on the bottom of the watermelon when it starts to turn a creamy color and then even kind of a yellow color, that's also an indicator of ripeness. And then for the Dixie Queens, these are an 80 day watermelon as well. They're supposed to have white seeds. Um, and I really haven't like, mine had a few black seeds in them. Oh, this one's already off the vine. Oh man, that one might be overripe. Shoot, sounds good, tiny bit tender. I'll have to cut into that one and see. But these can clock in up to 40 pounds. I don't think that's gonna be the weight on this one, but that's a good size watermelon. And the sugar baby vines are showing the most signs of stress here. You can see that there's a little bit more uh, of the vine looking dried up. Some pretty good size ones. Sugar babies were my best flavored one last year. They're a 78 day and typically have eight to 10 pound fruits. Hmm, I don't know. I don't think that one's ready. And then in the row back, we've got, actually I did pop one of the melon plants out that got um, broken off in a windstorm, the little seedling did. So I put a, a pumpkin called Pipsqueak in its place. And I see that there are some pumpkins, pumpkins forming on it, which is really exciting. But I've got a cantaloupe called Tuscany, which these are smaller. They usually clock in at about three pounds. I have been picking the most on this melon, so I don't even know if I've got any ready today. And then the other two in this space are honeydew. You can see that this one still has kind of a green color. On honeydew, we don't wait for them to slip the vine. They're a little bit harder to tell. You can either smell them, and if you can smell the melon you know, scent, uh, then you know it's getting very close or it may be ripe. And also the rind will change to a kind of a creamy white color. All right, so I'm just gonna pick through this patch and pick whatever is ready today.
pretty good haul of melons today. The Hale's Best plant had at least 10 or 15, I think more melons on the plant. We got four Crimson Sweets today, one, two, three, four, a couple of Dixie Queens, so that one in the back and then this big one right here. And then there are four sugar babies there, three sugar babies here, a couple of accidents. So I accidentally picked a white pumpkin. <laughs> I wasn't looking close enough and I thought it was a honeydew melon. They're growing really close to each other and I just grabbed that and it snapped right off. It looks really pretty though. Look at that. I mean, you would want to wait until the stem turned brown. So that's kind of a bummer. That means it probably won't last quite as long, but it's pretty. I also picked a Tuscany melon that's not quite ripe yet. I was just reaching in the plant and I saw, I think this discoloration, that kind of more uh, yellowy color and I thought it was ripe and I, I don't think it is. And we got several honeydew melon, one of which was cracked open. So I have this one here. I'll crack it open the rest of the way and see if it's not so gross that we can't give it to the chickens. Uh, but there are two, four, six, eight, ten and a half <laughs> honeydews. Look at this one. I've never had a melon grow like that. This is the kind of produce I usually sneak onto my dad's desk. I think I'll do that. Okay, still left in this space. We have cucumbers, peppers. Is that it? Cucumbers and peppers. And here are the two cucumber plants. These are called salad bush. They are a compact growing vine. So this is one plant here. This is one plant here. I stopped counting at 224 cucumbers and that was probably four weeks ago at this point. They just have produced like beasts. It's crazy. And I planted these from starts. I bought these at my parents' garden center from the greenhouse. I didn't start them from seed. So I'm not sure if you can get the seed for this variety, but I highly recommend if you find the plants to pick up a couple. And somebody said, if you have that many cucumbers, they must be pickling, but they're not. They're like standard regular cucumbers. Twenty-three cucumbers today. Now we're gonna tackle the peppers. I've got a whole bunch of different kinds of peppers in here. A mixture of red bells, green bells, yellow bells, maybe orange bells, I can't remember, in the front section. And then I've got jalapenos, gypsy peppers, barracuda, which are a poblano type. We've got sweet banana. Uh, we've got rayano chilies. We've got Thai chilies back in here. Looks like there's a whole bunch. always amazed by how many peppers there are. I mean, oh my goodness, look at this. Tons of red bells. We've got yellow bells, orange bells, green bells. We've got gypsy, which are a um, sweet pepper. We've got sweet banana. We've got jalapenos, the barracuda, and rayano peppers. And there are so many still on the plants. I didn't even mess with the, the uh, Thai chilies today because look at these. Look at how many chilies are on these plants. This is just one plant, and I think I've got four all together. I need to get them harvested sometime soon, but I wanna string them, and I know I don't have time to do that, so I'll probably wait a day or two to where I have a little block of time to get that project done. Before we head up to the other garden, I forgot there are some peaches on our trees that are ripe and ready to pick. They're small this year because they are first year. We planted them this spring, but they are so delicious. The three nectarines that were on our tree, we ate those and they, oh my goodness, it makes me so excited. It makes me want more nectarine trees. The plums done, they were wonderful. Um, the pear is still, I'll show you when we're back there. Let's head that direction. We've got an Alberta peach and a Snow Beauty white peach. I've been eating a ton of these already. These have been ripe for a while now. In fact, I think a few of them I'm not gonna be able to use, uh, but these are are just about perfect. So these have the orange with the kind of red blush on their skin. Again, they are on the small side this year because they are first year trees. I did thin the fruit though. I came through and thinned out at least half, if not more of the fruit that did set. But these have kind of a uh, peach yellowish flesh, kind of tinged with red, really yummy. And then these, these have really beautiful, kind of more of a darker red skin and white 
flesh. Okay, so real quick, here's the Snow Beauty White Peach. That's what the inside looks like right there. Free stone, that means the pit comes out really easy. This, the uh, flesh doesn't stick to it. And then the Alberta Peach. Oop, there we go. Definitely more of an intense color. Again, the pit comes right out. And I'm gonna eat these right now, hang on. So these two peaches are on the back side of the orchard here. And just as a real quick reference, I know I've showed you guys these trees a whole bunch, but we've got a red Bartlett pear right here. So the pears are starting to size up. They're looking really beautiful, the poor tree. I should take these fruit off. But anyway, we're so close to having them ripe. I'm just leaving them there. We've got a Santa Rosa plum, a flavor top nectarine. There is a honey crisp apple on this side. This is a harcot apricot. This is the only tree I didn't really care for the fruit on this one as much as the Tilton apricot. Tiltons are so incredibly sweet and delicious. Then we have a Fuji apple on that side. And Chad has been here. He dug out the area right here and then they brought in road mix and got it all tamped down so we can get our concrete poured for our flower shed that's going in back here. Anyway, let's get the uh, peaches picked and then we can head up and do beans and tomatoes in the other garden. Whoa. So almost an entire five gallon bucket full. There are a few peaches left, but not a whole bunch. There's probably, I don't know, 15 left on that tree and maybe like five left on this tree. And as far as spraying goes, I only sprayed all of these trees one time. It was mid-March. I did an application of dormant oil and liquid copper to help with any overwintering insects and or fungal diseases. Um, typically you wanna do that two or three times through the course of the winter. There's kind of specific a specific schedule, which maybe we'll link that video down below if you're interested. Typically though, when the, the trees start to bloom and have lost maybe about half to two thirds of their, their petals, you start in with a more of a contact insecticide. Um, to keep your fruit trees clean, but I haven't done a single dang thing and our fruit is so clean this year, uh, which is so nice. I, I don't expect it to be that way every single year, but I'm thankful this first year that the trees really have um, been an easy, an easy thing to have back here. So here we are in the other garden space. This should go fairly quick, I think. I've got some hot and heavy peppers that are ripe and ready to pick. We've got garden treasure tomatoes. We've got garden gem tomatoes here. Uh, we've got beans right here, jade beans, and jade beans right here. We've got everything else hanging out here in the shade. Isn't that a beautiful load of stuff? Oh my goodness. So thankful. There it is. Isn't it gorgeous? So much wonderful food right here. I only picked one of the areas I had beans in that I showed you. I did not pick the three by six that's full of beans because this is a lot. Like it's this full. I need to process all of these first and then I'll pick the rest. We got tomatoes up in this area closer to the house. There's garden gem on the top. They're the ones that are shaped more like Roma's. And then there are some big garden treasures at the bottom here. I picked those first. And then we did add a few hot and heavy peppers to the pepper crate. Just kind of want to pan over all of this slowly. It is so beautiful. Look at all the color. I can smell these right now. I can smell the peaches and I can also smell the cantaloupe. And we got our bonus pumpkin too. I think I want to run this stuff into the barn and get a quick wait. All right, so I got the weights of everything today, minus 16 and a half pounds, which was the collective weight of all of our buckets, 
the basket, and the three crates, which gave us a grand total today of 414.8 pounds just in the back of this gator, which means that we are at, and I wrote it down, 1,142 pounds just with onions and potatoes, those two crops, and this one harvest, which is amazing because I've harvested a heck of a lot more than this. I mean, you take into account all of, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know how to track the amount of stuff that has come out of the garden. Uh, it's just been an uh, incredibly amazing year. And I was poking around in the pumpkin patch the other night because you can see nothing. It is so full of leaves that it just looks like there's nothing growing there but leaves. So I got in there because I thought, well, are we gonna have anything to carve? My uh, brother and sister-in-law host a pumpkin carving event every year and his pumpkins, I don't think that they produce like they normally do. He's like the king of producing the biggest pumpkins and I don't think they got as many. So I was hoping that I could fill in the gaps and I think we're gonna be able to. There's quite a lot of really fun things out there and I don't think I'm gonna even know what's out there just kind of like last year until I harvest. But from what I can tell, I think it's gonna be another good year. So the plan for all of this stuff, I'm gonna put it in the root cellar for right now. Tomorrow I'll go through everything and hold back what we can use here at the house. I know like with this amount of peaches, I will probably try to freeze, process, uh, maybe even make some fruit leather. I'm actually gonna take a few of these out to my parents' house tonight. We're taking dinner out there and I'm gonna grill up peaches and I'm making a cinnamon creme anglaise, which is like this heavy, like thick cream that's vanilla and cinnamon and you drizzle it over a grilled piece of fruit or drizzle it over fresh berries. Oh, I forgot to pick berries. Oh, I was totally gonna do that today. Pick strawberries and now I'm out of time. So that'll have to probably be tomorrow. Anyway, I'll go through, pick out the things that we can use here at the house and then we'll donate the rest of it. I actually still need to do that with my onions and potatoes. So maybe I can do that all in one fell swoop. Also for tonight's dinner, so I have a ham in the oven right now. It smells so good. And I'm gonna make mashed potatoes from the garden and gravy and homemade biscuits. We're gonna have sauteed green beans and tomato and basil with fresh mozzarella. That's tonight's dinner. And then we're topping it up with the peach, the grilled peaches with the cinnamon creme anglaise. You excited to go to Papa Nana's for dinner tonight? Yeah. And that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a really pleasant day, just harvesting things out of the garden. You know, I don't oftentimes, um, Kind of save enough time to do all of it at once i usually do like one thing here and there so it's always fun to see it like collectively what it looks like it makes any back of any kind of gator or cart look amazing anyway we will see you guys in the next video bye